In fact, that's why there is really only one type of investor that should be putting their money in the QYLD right now. A fraction of the investors out there that can confidently say they're going to hold the shares and not worry about that falling stock price. Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and a video that will undeniably piss off a lot of people. Five monthly dividend stocks that beat the QYLD. Five stocks better than the NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF. It is an extremely popular fund. It pays a too good to be true 11.8% dividend yield. And you know what? It is a little too good to be true. But it is easy to see why this fund is so popular. It pays one of the highest dividend yields out there. Put $10,000 in the fund, it's going to put almost $1,200 in your pocket every year. You'll also see those checks hit your account every single month, which is hugely motivating. You know, watching that cash flow like you're some kind of TikTok star. Now, it's not that the QYLD is a bad fund, but it is losing your money compared to the monthly dividend stocks I'm going to show you right now. In fact, the QYLD returned just 8% a year over the last five years. Yes, even with that 12% dividend yield, it returned only 8% because the share price dropped so much and it's hugely underperformed the stocks it holds. In this video, I'll reveal five dividend stocks with an average return of 15.5% a year, almost double the QYLD, all with strong dividend yields and paying them out every single month. I'll also explain why the QYLD strategy is not working, the hidden risks in the fund, and the only type of investor that should be investing in it right now. We're getting started, but before we do, you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of the community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. On a side note, you can find all these stocks on the Weeble app. Use the link I'll leave in the description below and get five free stocks up to $9,600 when you open and fund a new account. Weeble is also running a special promotion. Get $5 in crypto rewards with your first cryptocurrency trade of a dollar or more. Free is always great, but what I really like about this app is the stock simulator that allows me to test out ideas and track stocks before investing my own money. So check out that with the link below. Now let's start with a quick explainer on how the QYLD fund works, and then I'm going to show you those five monthly dividend stocks that actually beat it. The fund uses a covered call strategy on the NASDAQ 100 index. That's the 100 largest companies in that tech heavy NASDAQ. So what it's doing here, it's buying the 100 stocks in this index, mostly large technology companies, and then it's selling call options against those. Call options give an investor the right to buy a stock at a certain price up to a set date in the future. And for that right, they pay the other investor a premium up front. For example, if I own shares of Tesla, but we're worried it might come down from that $800 share price, or, or if I just wanted to create a cash flow from this non-dividend paying stock, I could sell a call option to another investor. And looking at the stocks in this fund, it's a who's who of big tech companies with more than half a billion dollars in shares of Apple alone, along with Amazon and Microsoft. But if you scroll down, you see it's not all tech stocks. You've got some shares of Comcast and Pepsi here as well because they're also in that NASDAQ 100 index. Now what you don't see here though, you can see with all the fund holdings on the website and that's that covered call strategy. So what it's selling to offset some of that risk and generate that cash flow. You can see this by going to the fund website and then clicking on this download all holdings. Here we see the 102 stocks held in the fund and the market value all the way from the $847 million in shares of Apple to $7.8 million in shares of Constellation Energy for a total fund assets just over $6.8 billion. And it's here in this last line that we see that covered call strategy. The fund has sold calls against the NASDAQ index expiring in a month for a market value of $222 million, which is about 3.3% of the total fund assets. And there's a few things that are important here that are gonna help you understand the strategy and where the risks are and why the fund might underperform some of these other stocks. First, the fund is selling calls against about 3% of its stocks each month, just enough to produce that cash needed to pay out the 12% the annualized dividend yield. The cost of selling those calls every month is gonna be a drag on that performance, though, though it is fairly small. Also though, just using that covered call strategy means that if the stocks in the NASDAQ jump higher in one month, the fund is gonna miss out on some of that because it's sold another investor the right to buy those shares for cheaper. And that's why you saw the QYLD underperform the NASDAQ tech stocks by so much over the last few years. Another weakness though is that because the QYLD is a fund of over 100 stocks, it's gonna lose the opportunity to run higher if any of those stocks do really well. The non-tech stocks like Constellation Energy and Ross Discount Stores 
tends to slow the growth down a little bit and the returns versus the stocks that we're gonna look at. I'm excited to get into that list of monthly dividend stocks, so I'll show you later why the QYLD underperforms them and the one type of investor that might still choose it over these. We're gonna be counting up to the highest total return dividend stock and first on our list, Main Street Capital, ticker MAIN, it's 6% yield and 9.2% annual return. Now, okay, just a minute, before you click out or leave one of your comments, is something like, you need that 12% dividend yield to pay your mac and cheese addiction and 6% just isn't gonna cut it? I will show you later what most investors get wrong about yield versus returns and how to create higher dividends from your stocks. Main Street is a business development corporation specializing in loans and equity investment into mid-sized businesses with shares producing a 9.2% annual return over the last five years. The company has consistently increased its dividend, now at 20 cents a share, along with special dividends of $4 a share distributed since 2013. Main Street has 182 portfolio investments as of the most recent quarter, with the largest representing just 3% of the total fair value, so a hit to any of these investments isn't gonna hurt the shares that much. Now, one thing you always wanna watch for in these BDC stocks is to compare the effective yield on the company's investments with its dividend yield. In this case, Main Street earns a weighted average yield of 9.7% on its loan investments and then pays out that 6% monthly dividends. The average yield above that committed dividend yield is a must for that dividend sustainability. Gladstone Capital, ticker GLAD, pays a 7.2% dividend yield and has rewarded investors with an 11.7% annual return over the last five years. And now normally I wouldn't load up the portfolio with so many business development corporations, so many BDCs, instead trying to diversify more into those Emirates, real estate stocks, and other dividend stocks, but this chart shows an interesting idea for the group. This is the average portfolio yield for Gladstone since 2012 and notice rates were much higher before 2019. The average yield on loans was over 11.6% in the five years through 2019 versus just 10.5% last year. So what I think, as interest rates rise over the next couple of years, you're gonna see that average portfolio yield rise as well. As long as the economy just doesn't fall apart and loan defaults don't jump, these BDCs are primed to book higher cash flow and pay out higher yields to their investors. But if you are overexposing a portfolio to just one type of company, especially BDCs, then you wanna pay special attention to each company's sources of capital and its business. For example, every BDC is gonna show you the industries in which it loans and the types of loans it's making. You see here that Gladstone is well diversified across 17 industries, so any major event in any one group probably isn't gonna materially affect the company. We've still got three more of those monthly dividend stocks to reveal, along with how to boost your dividend yield in all five of these stocks, but, but I see some itchy fingers there heading to the comments, so I wanna address the big question I know you're all asking. You're probably asking yourself, uh, if the plan is to hold the QYLD forever and just keep collecting those dividends, what the hell does it matter if the share price falls? I'm not selling, so I don't care. Nation, you know I love the buy and hold strategy, but you've also gotta ask yourself how many of the stocks that you own right now that you've held more for maybe a year or two. In fact, data from the New York Stock Exchange shows the average holding period for a stock is now just 5.5 months. So even if you truly do intend to hold the QYLD forever and resist that urge to sell, a lot of life happens in 30 or 40 years expenses come up and even that 12% annual dividend isn't gonna be enough for most people to live on in retirement. Even on a $100,000 portfolio, that 12% dividend yield is only about $1,000 a month. So you're gonna need to sell those shares and when you do, it's gonna suck if you have to sell them for less than you paid. In fact, that's why there is really only one type of investor that should be putting their money in the QYLD right now. A fraction of the investors out there that can confidently say, they're gonna hold the shares and not worry about that falling stock price. If you are already well into retirement and know that that dividend income from the QYLD is all you'll ever need without selling the shares, only then if you're that 99% certain that your investment's gonna outlive you, then I'd say that higher yield on the QYLD is better than the higher total return on these other stocks. So hey, say you're still not convinced, you're committed to holding the stock forever and that price just doesn't matter but it does. That's because the falling stock price may also eventually mean a falling dividend payment. The current dividend yield may almost be 12%, but 
That doesn't help you if you bought the shares in December 2017 at $25 each. The most recent dividend in February was only 20 cents a share or $2.42 on an annual basis. And it's been as low as 17 cents a share in 2019. That would be a dividend yield of just 8.2% for investors buying at that $25 share price. Horizon Technology Finance, ticker HRZN, is a unique case in these BDCs along with its 7.7% dividend yield and 17.5% annual return. Horizon makes secured loans in venture and private equity backed companies in the life sciences and technology industry. So you get that strong cash flow on the loans, but also long-term growth from that equity investment. The portfolio of loans is well diversified across sector, geography, and company stage. All of these are gonna be in those fast growing startups backed by venture capital and again, a great niche in healthcare and technology. So besides that high yield you get from the typical business development corporation, here you get a little bit of a growth stock as well. The average yield on the portfolio debt is 16.3%, well above the 7% dividend yield. In fact, I think the biggest yield spread I've seen in these BDC stocks. That keeps the dividend safe and it's gonna mean the stock price should continue to rise. Next on our monthly dividends list is a fan favorite, Gladstone Investment Corporation, ticker GAIN, for its 6% yield and 19.7% annual return over the last five years. And why I like gain here is because it takes a higher equity share than most of the other BDCs. Remember, those business development corporations, they're mostly making loans, so the upside is capped at that interest rate but Gladstone's target investment is 25% equity and 75% debt versus, versus maybe a traditional BDC that's gonna look for less than 10% equity in the companies it works with. That higher equity ownership is gonna mean higher risk, but it also means higher returns on these investments. And we see that in Gaines' history of return on equity, which is well above the industry average. The five-year average ROE of 17% is over three times the median ROE for that BDC group. And, even though near-term return has come down a little bit, it's still well above the average for the group. Gladstone's current portfolio is spread across 28 companies in 14 industries, so that level of diversification that should help it continue those returns even in a sluggish economy. The shares have done so well, in fact, that it's been pay able to pay out multiple special dividends, boosting that cash return. I've got one more monthly dividend stock to reveal, one with a yield almost 7% and a 20% annualized return over the last five years, but I know some of you are still saying, I need that higher dividend payment. So I wanna show you how to create a higher dividend from any of these five stocks, how to get that higher cash payment plus the return. Sell stock. Now hear me out because I know that's like blasphemy for us investors. What most investors don't realize though is you are still better off selling shares on a higher return stock than collecting that high dividend on a stock that loses value. Look at two portfolios here. Each one has only one stock. One portfolio in blue here invested $10,000 in shares of the QYLD five years ago for $23.46 a share. Over those five years, the investor collects about $2.43 a share in dividends each year, or just over $1,036, a 10.3% dividend yield. Since the stock has fallen to a $20 share price though, the portfolio is now only worth $8,546. The other investor bought shares of Gladstone Investment, ticker GAIN, for $9.68 a share, but the same 10,000 starting portfolio. Since the stock only pays a 6% dividend yield, each year the investor had to sell some shares to, to make up that difference and collect a total of $1,100 to pay off the loan for their instant pot they bought in 2017. Even having to sell these shares every year though, selling a total of 183 shares over the five years, that investor would still have over 850 shares of gain. With the shares now at $14.93 each, the portfolio is now worth $12,690, $4,000 more than the QYLD investor. What about taxes? They would be the same. You pay your long-term capital gains rates and taxes on any dividends you collect each year. A hold a stock for more than a year and then sell shares? Yep, same long-term capital gains rate. Nation, do not buy into a stock or a fund that constantly underperforms or loses value just for that higher dividend yield. Watch that total return of the stock price and the dividend because you can always create your own dividend yield. And the highest return of the group, at 19.8% annually over the last five years, the Sabine Royalty Trust, ticker SBR, with its 6.9% dividend yield. Sabine has an oil and gas portfolio that covers two million acres in Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas. 
Reserves on the assets are estimated to produce for at least another eight to 10 years, and the parent company regularly explores for new assets. Now, this one is all about oil prices, and even if the price of crude does come down from the recent highs, stocks like Sabian are gonna be cash machines, so look for the explorers and the MLPs for those cash flows. Click on the video to the right for the 11 highest paying dividend stocks in each sector. 11 dividend stocks for a diversified cash flow portfolio. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.